Hey, let's talk about batteries. One of the questions that keeps popping up from time to time is why doesn't a suitcase battery exist? It keeps popping up in all my videos, different versions of that, but it's essentially that. Why isn't there a small battery you know, the size of a suitcase. And traditionally, the reason that hasn't existed is because batteries are really expensive. Batteries are really big, wait, big, heavy, and expensive. Yeah, so those are the main reasons. So essentially, you can't put a big enough battery to be useful in, in the space of a suitcase, right? But within the last few years, within the last decade or so, battery technology has incrementally gotten better. And so now in 2019, the question is, why not? Why doesn't that exist? Can we build something? I'd say the challenge is on. Let's build that battery and let's see how useful we can make it. What do you say? The first thing you have to choose is a case. So let's go to amazon.com. Okay, here's one. So this Amazon Basics hard case, small is too small. The large is kind of too big let's do the medium one. next you have to figure out how to put all the batteries together and luckily i've been working on that so you just go to kit.com for slash jehu and then you come up to this page here for the small battery packs this are the ones 7s uh 24 volt battery module uh so for this specific project we're gonna need 14 of these and then you're gonna need two bmss next we're gonna need batteries Let's go to evwest.com. For this particular project, I think the VTC6 is perfect cell. It's got energy density and power density at the same time. So you will have to get one case of this, 200 of these cells to populate that case. So we're gonna need a few more parts, but those are gonna be linked at the bottom in the description of this video. First things we have to do is assemble our 14 PCB battery module kits. This is pretty simple. You basically have to solder a connector the battery holders and a fuse into each one of these boards. I have a separate video that goes into fine detail how to do this, and it's linked also in the description. Next, take two of the modules that you just populated, put them next to each other with the connectors facing the same direction, and then lay them down. So you need them like this, kind of mirror from each other. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take these XT60 pigtails and solder them here until finally you end up with something like this next take three different modules and you're going to solder the xt60 connectors the xt60 connectors go on the opposite side of the ribbon connector all right they should look like this when they're done next the two bms boards have to be populated and for this also i have a separate dedicated video that walks you step by step on how to populate the bms boards all right, so at this point, this is what you should have. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boards that are populated with the basic things, which are the ribbon connector, the battery holders, and a fuse. And then three boards that have all the basic stuff plus the XT60 connector on the bottom of the board. Then you should have two that instead of the XT60 connector, they'll have an XT60 pigtail. And then the two BMS boards. Next, let's take a look at the battery cells and what we need to do with those. The VTC6 cells from EV West come in factory packaging. They were intended for OEM automotive use and for that reason, they don't have wrappings. So that means you have to wrap them. The process is not very hard and it's not very expensive. You take a carburetor isolator like this, put it on the positive side and then slide the pre-cut wrappers. You can get these in any color, clear like this, or in this case, I'm actually using green ones. The whole process takes about an hour to do the 200 cells. Once you're done with that, now you're ready to start populating your boards. Here are some things to think about. Make sure all your cells are exactly the same voltage. Now, if you 
are taking them straight from the box that they came in and you just wrap them you're they're gonna be at about 3.4 3.5 volts uh and they're all gonna be pretty close together so you don't have to do anything you just have to popular but if you have played with them if you have charged them and discharge them to test them or whatever you need to make sure that they're all the same voltage when you put them onto the board once you do that then you have to pay attention to the polarity right these boards are marked with plus and minus so the positives goes on this side and the negatives go on that side make sure all your cells are facing the right direction the same direction and then you can start populating them in this case one two three four five six seven they're all facing with the positive on that side the positives over here then you can populate it and populating these is very simple that's the reason you're going with this system because it's the easiest ones to actually populate it with cells and that side is done let's do the other side again i can't stress enough how important this is make sure your cells are all facing the right direction and the same direction these batteries put out a ton of power and you're gonna melt stuff uh if not burn yourself or ruin your boards you know at the very least so gotta pay extra attention when you're doing this and just like that your first board is done now you gotta do the other 14. all right now they're all done now it's time to start assembling first step is to take eight of the basic boards plus the two that have the xc60 pigtail this is the arrangement of the first module. It's gonna be two of the basic ones and then one with the pigtail and then one, two, three, four of the uh, basic ones and then the other one with the pigtail and then the other two of the basic ones. So let's start assembling by first putting these two together. So the first module, you're gonna take two of the 25 millimeter standoffs, put them on the top, then take your 40 millimeters Right, one in the back and then one in the front, right? And that's on the top. On the bottom here, you're gonna take, right? You're gonna take one of these screws and then put it on there and then use that one. Screw and then 40 millimeter. And then we need to tighten all of those. First module, second module, right? So the second module goes right on top there. Make sure the positive is with the positive so you don't short it out if everything is good everything's the same there should be no sparks tighten those guys and take this guy the one with the pigtail the one that has the pigtail on the side of the connector here I check to see if there's going to be any sparks by doing this once i see that there's no sparks then you can connect it it's just a regular module Okay. Another regular module. All right, on the very last one, what I'm gonna do is put nuts on the ones over here on the on the right, on the bottom here, and on the top we're gonna do nylon, female to female standoff. Go and do this guy, and that is essentially what we are making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the third one from each side, and they're pointing to the inside. All right, now to do the first side module we're gonna start with a bms and with two of the uh boards that have the xt60 connectors right we start with the bms we use two of, of these uh 25 millimeter standoffs for the bottom we're gonna use two standoffs and two screws there we go you see that then we put the next module use the 40 millimeter standoffs next we do the next module and then we're gonna do four nuts and there we go our module let's build the other module all right for the second module again we start with the bms and four of the 25 millimeters for the bottom 
Next, we take the uh, basic one and we install it like this. Here we go, the four standoffs. Finally, we do the one, the last one that has the connector. And we, we finish it off with four nuts. All right, and here we go. All right, at this point, your project should look like this. 10 modules here with the two, with the pigtails here, and then this side one, you know, with the two connectors, and then this one with the one connector, right? And then with screws on the bottom, and then standoffs on the top. All right, at this point, let's talk about the ribbon. You're gonna need a ribbon that is at least 50 inches long. You're going to put these guys, three of them, an inch and five eighths apart, and then this one's gonna be two and an eight. And then this one's gonna be about nine and a half, and then the next 10 are going to be about two and an eighth apart. Then but you're gonna leave a space of about 12 inches for the last three and then again it's gonna be one and three quarter and then this is gonna be about two and a quarter. Crimping the connectors to the ribbon cable should not be hard if you use the correct tool. It's linked down in the description of the video. Then whatever leftover you have you can then at this point cut it off. Make sure when you cut them they're nice and clean so that there's no chance of uh, you know them shorting out so here's how you install this rib right so you start on this side there we go all right so this is essentially what you have to build right 14 boards stacked together on top of each other and then two bms units at the very ends now of course you can't leave it this length because well it won't fit on the case so what you have to do is you have to push this guy and put it in here and then these two push them in here and so these all these other cables are to plug that to connect the electricity from here to here right so there's two of those and then this guys they have extra wire here to then allow to have those there same thing with this the easiest way i found is to go actually all the way around like this put them here and then that'll feed the next one that'll feed this one at this point it's time to put it in our case then we're gonna take our side module connect the ribbon cables then we're gonna secure it using two screws so then we connect this cable next we'll install this module ribbon is going to be routed through the back use screws we connect this guy there we go then we have to install the hall effect sensor i'm going to use four 440 screws all right at this point you will have to drill a few holes in the case for the meter and the main terminal post you then have to connect everything following the wiring schematic found here. You can pause this frame here or you can find that link to download the image in the description. Okay, so after all of these steps, you now have a 30 pound box with 2.2 kilowatt hours of battery, fully protected by a BMS that will deliver a max of 100 amps at 24 volts. So what exactly does 2.2 kilowatt hour mean? How much energy is that exactly? Well, it's the equivalent of running a 100 watt light bulb for 22 hours. Yeah, that's old school. No one remembers these things. In modern terms, it will charge your iPhone 270 times or your 13 inch MacBook 30 times. It will power the average refrigerator for one to two days, a 32 inch LED TV for over 100 hours. So as you can see, this is a very big and versatile battery. For RV people, it can be used straight as a replacement in their 24 volt systems. But for most other stuff, you will need to convert the 24 volts into other formats like 120 volts AC or 220 volts AC using an inverter. I have some linked in the description. So as an ultimate test for this battery, I invited a friend to help out. All right, so I'm here with my friend, Ben Sullins from the channel Teslanomics. We're gonna actually test if we can charge Teslas with this battery that we just made so if you want to follow me into his channel tesla nomics follow the link right here in the description uh, <laughs> follow the link here in the screens or in the description and then you can see if we're actually successful at 
charging Tesla. At this point, like always, I'd want to thank you for watching this video and I want to invite you to see the second part that we shot with Ben at the Teslanomics channel by clicking in this link here. Thank you once again. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. The thing that is going to work, it's the gas can for your Tesla. So, Jehu, tell me what we have going on. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's essentially a battery box, right? Uh, should we tell them to go inside? Because <laughs> your thing is going to pick it up, right? <laughs>